Have you ever wondered about the difference between Portuguese from Portugal and Portuguese from Brazil? If so, then this video is for you. Well, you're about to meet two of my very coolest Portuguese friends, one from Brazil, one from Portugal, and we're gonna have some fun comparing these two varieties of Portuguese. I'm secretly hoping that I'm gonna get them to stump each other with some of this vocabulary, so this should be interesting. <laughs> By the way, if you're new here, my name is Ollie Richards, and this channel is all about helping you to learn a new language quickly using the power of story so that you can become fluent faster and live your best life. Now, the first thing you notice with any new language really is the way it sounds, right? And Brazilians, well, they pronounce every single syllable in the word most of the time, while in Portugal, well, they really don't. Saúde. Noite. Diamante. Brazilians really get that sound out in the word endings, but listen to how European Portuguese almost loses that last vowel. Saud. Noite. Diamant. This is typical of words ending in de or te, the g or chi, but it's not just at the end of words that vowel sounds are different. Let's hear some longer words jam packed with vowels. Crescimento. Crescimento. Universidade. Universidade. Cabeleireiro. Cabeleireiro. Apaixonar. Apaixonar. The Brazilian words actually sound longer. Did you hear that ah sound? Portugal keeps the sound closed like a schwa, but Brazil really opens it up. It reminds me of the Italian ah. It's a very open lyrical sound. Diamante. Diamante. Universidade. Universidade. So this is the biggest difference, it's how they say their vowels. But what about consonants? Well, the word diamante gave you your first clue. So let's hear a couple more words with D. Dia. 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 Difícil. Difícil. Desgarrada. Desgarrada. A propósito, você está curtindo o vídeo? Tá? Foi legal. Like and subscribe to the channel. That's what it's all about. Now, what about the R? Well, the R is an interesting one because it's pretty, it's a pretty diverse little letter. I know that in Brazil, you can often tell what region someone comes from just the way, just by the way that they pronounce their R's, but are they in agreement with Portugal? Let's have a look. First of all, there is the single R. Porta. Porta. Rio. Rio. Honrar. Honrar. This actually reminds me of the way that they speak in the Rio de Janeiro. There's a very distinctive Carioca accent, and the way that they say their R's can be rather dramatic. Falar quarto. But what about that double R? Well, this can depend on the region. Carro. Carro. Guerra. Guerra. Guitarra. Guitarra. Arroz. Arroz. Now, when you hear Portuguese words ending in L, you might not think there is an L there at all. Papel. Papel. Azul. Azul. It's funny, Portugal seems to make that L disappear, whereas Brazil says it like a W, ow, w. Neither of them really says that clear L, L sound like we would expect from English. And after all, after, why should they? It's not English, is it? Now let's talk about the S sound, the S sound. Have a listen to this. Seiscentas asas azuis. Seiscentas asas Azuis. Well, that was certainly a mouthful. Why be boring, right? If you think that you can say that in either dialect, I, I dare you to pause the video and give it a try. Go on. But even in everyday words like dois, meaning two, Brazil dr draws out that s sound, whereas in Portugal it's a lot more like a dois, dois with a sh at the end. Mind you, people from Rio might confuse you though, because there is definitely more of a European sh ending in that part of Brazil. It's a bit of a mix going on. Another s sound that you might have wondered about is the s with a cedilla. Is it the same in both countries? Dança. Dança. Coração. Coração. Exceção. Exceção. Intenção. Intenção. Now, individual sounds are one thing, but when it comes to actually talking, does word choice matter? I mean, hello is hello, right? No? Yes? Well, maybe. Here's the thing, it matters. Brazilians are totally fine if you say hola or a simple oi. There's a, it's just an informal, very informal greeting. But how does Portugal feel about that one, that oi? It's 
quite a direct sound, isn't it? Especially, especially in English. I mean, this is actually a non-existent word in the Portuguese, in the Portugal dictionary. So it's not something that you'll hear that often. Although these days with the influence of Brazilian telenovelas in, in Portugal, you might actually hear the oi uh, here and there. If someone says that to me, I wouldn't mind at all. Oi, tudo bem? No problem. Uh, but I probably would choose the people I would say it to. If it's in a more informal, familiar context, absolutely fine. But if I don't know the person well, then I would favor hola. That's the most common or uh, form of greeting in Portugal. Hola. As a rule of thumb, just remember that Portugal is a lot more conscious of formality. So although you can say hola as a casual greeting, it is common to greet with the more proper bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, como está? Tudo bem? Although not with my Brazilian accent, you want to do that with a Portuguese accent. Uh, especially with older folks, you might also want to use senhor and senhora in Portugal. It isn't that you don't have to be polite in Brazil. It's always good to be polite, I think. You can just get away with a lot less formality. Like this word, for example. Você. Você. Você meaning you. In Brazil, you will hear this everywhere. You can use this pronoun to address just about everyone. Formal, informal, você is, where's your friend? Você é músico. Você toca violão. In the Brazilian South, it can be a little different. You'll hear tu a lot more. That is with friends and such. And those older generations in the southern states also appreciate being called senhor or senhora. Uh, but in most places, você is normal and of course will always be understood. You just have to watch some cool Brazilian movies to get that one stuck in your head. And I've got a really great list of the best Brazilian movies right here. I'll put that in the uh, in the description of the video uh, below as well. However, saying você to everyone in Portugal would be a little bit weird. People will look at you kind of funny, although they will just they would just guess that you've learned in Brazil. In Portugal, você is how you address teachers and authority figures. Uh, so definitely rather use tu when you want to say you in Portugal. És músico. But if you're addressing the person by você, which is a slightly more formal and Portuguese, then we'd say, é músico. Now, when it comes to colloquialisms, a language course can only really do so much since every regional vernacular varies so greatly. But you pick these things up quickly once you start mingling with the locals. Like verbing, for example. Have you ever heard this word, verbing? Us English speakers do it all the time. We say strange things like, I'm going to Google it, or he authored a book. In my case, a Portuguese short story book. I authored it. Not a real word is it to author, but we use it. Anyway, this is called verbing. The word author is a noun, but you turn it into authored to make it a verb. Now, since Brazil and Portugal have the entire Atlantic Ocean between them, I wasn't surprised to discover that only one of them really does some creative verbing. And can you guess which country it is? Parabenizar. Dar os parabéns. Ordenar. Dar ordens. No surprise there, Brazil being all about extreme festivities and colour and passion, why not also break all the rules while you're at it? Now, speaking of passion and verbs, I believe European Portuguese speakers say I love you in a different way to Brazilians, meaning they often put the pronoun after the verb, like this. Amut. Eu te amo. This also happens with reflexive verbs. So whereas Brazilians would say sinta-se em casa, a person from Portugal would say, se sinta em casa, the pronoun moves. But there's another way in which Brazilian is closer to English in style. Phrases like, I'm walking, I'm skating, I'm playing guitar. In Brazil, you can translate these more directly. Estou a caminhar. Estou caminhando. Estou a patinar. Estou patinando. Estou a tocar guitarra. Estou tocando violão. So which style do you prefer? Now look, I haven't forgotten about slang. We'll get to that soon. But right now, I can't wait any longer to see if these guys can actually confuse each other. So some words have no relation whatsoever between the two languages. So I'm going to show Portugal a picture and then Brazil a picture and then we'll see what words they come up with. Okay? Ananás. Abacaxi. Telemóvel. Celular. Rapariga. Oh, no, 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 don't say that in Brazil. You will get in trouble. Menina. Or garota. 
equipa. Time or equipe. Relva. Grama. Bicha. No, 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 don't say that in Brazil. That's gonna get you in trouble. Fila. Balões. Balanço. Frigorífico. Geladeira. Dobragem. Dublagem. Ligadura. Atadura. Now let's swap this around. Okay. Brazil first. Sorvete. Gelado. Terno. Fato. Xícara. Chávena. Conversível. Descaptável. Legal. Giro. Ou fish. Well, I can see there is a lot that I don't understand yet about European Portuguese. I mean, I learned Portuguese in Brazil. Speaking of which, how do you, how do you guys both say understand? Eu percebo. To say I understand, entendo. To ask, do you understand, entendi. Okay. Denji. Uh, I mean, uh, percebi. Well, whatever. To make things more confusing, there's another bunch of words that both countries use, but they don't have the same meaning. And so this is where things can get really tricky. So now let's take some Portuguese words, and my friends are going to say what it means. It means nickname. My apelido is Lu. So that word refers to your family name. A bribe. This is actually the fee we pay for each year of a university course. Bathroom. Lifeguard. But I would use a different word for lifeguard personally. I would say salva-vidas or nadador salvador. That's a dishonest, unscrupulous person. A group of kids. Okay, well, next time I go to Portugal, I will be sure to avoid asking any waiters where the banheiro is. I mean, that could be seriously embarrassing, right? Now, speaking of traveling, if you catch a plane to both Portugal and Brazil, the first difference you're likely to notice is what's the transport words, starting with what to call your flight attendant. Hospedeira de bordo. Aeromoça. And a train is? Comboio. Trem. How about the bus stop? Paragem de autocarro. Parada de ônibus. And if you've hired a conversível to cruise down the highway, well, in Brazil, when you see a U-turn sign, it's going to say retornar. But in Portugal, the sign is a lot more literal, inversão de marcha. Now, of course, let's not forget the spelling. There are lots of words that are spelled differently in European and Brazilian Portuguese, like these ones. Worth noting. Now, are you ready for a final showdown? Time to compare Portuguese slang. Pão duro. We all have that family member or that friend who does not like to spend money. Pão duro is a penny pincher, you know, a stingy, cheap person who does not like to spend their money. E aí? I love this expression. It can mean a few different things. One way to think about it is just like what's up. So say I'm on campus or I'm at a bar and I see my friend and I go like, hey, yay. You can also use it just like, hey, I'm on campus and I come across my friend Vanessa. I go like, yay, Vanessa, tudo bem? Hey, Vanessa, how are you? It could also mean like, so, like a question. So say my friend Vanessa um, just had a job interview and I want to say, so how did it go? I say, e aí, como foi? Phonics. Phonics, it's more of an expression of surprise or uh, when you're upset, somebody says something or does something or you hurt yourself and you just go, phonics. Cabeça dura means stubborn. You know that friend who will not listen to advice or opinions and who will do whatever they want to do, no matter what anyone tells them? Well, that friend is cabeça dura. Bué means much or very much. So, in other words, it's muito in Portuguese. And it's actually a word that comes from 
uh, Angolans who also speak Portuguese. Beleza. It means a few different things, all of them positive. So one of the things is cool. Let's say I tell you I'm going to email you information about that book we talked about and you just want to say cool, you say beleza. It could also mean got it. Let's say your manager asks to have a certain report ready by Friday and you want to say got it, you can just say beleza. Now keep in mind this is an informal word, an informal expression, so I'm assuming you know you can say beleza to your manager. Fada sensata. It's a very common expression in social media. So say your friend posts something that you completely agree, you think it's a sensible opinion, it makes sense, you can just write a comment saying fada sensata. So you're praising and agreeing with your friend's post. Balurdio, a lot of money or expensive. Só um minutinho. It means just a sec, just an instant, but not literally. You know, maybe I'm working from my home office and my husband calls me and I want to say one instant or one second. I say só um minutinho. Burro, we would use, uh, or some people would use to call somebody who is dumb, who's not very clever or intelligent, with a low IQ. Não tô nem aí. I don't care. I don't give two hoots. Gajo, tipo, bacano, guy, lad, chap. Foi mal. This is an informal way to apologize, to acknowledge a mistake. It's like, my bad. Foi mal. Fish, baril, altamente. Cool, nice one. Sextou. It means it's Friday. It's the weekend. It's a happy expression we, we use to say that the weekend is finally here. The week is over. Briol. Grande briol. Muito frio. frio. So it's very cold. Lacrar. That's a slang word that means to knock it out of the park, to do an excellent job. So say my friend Vanessa just got three job offers. I can say lacro. I'm using the verb in the past tense because the situation already happened and what I'm saying is like, wow, you knocked it out of the park. Beber um copo to go out for a drink. Vamos beber um copo? Here's an expression that I love. Mala sem alça. It means a suitcase without a handle. So imagine you're traveling. You're going to Brazil for like four weeks and you have two big suitcases with you, but they don't have a handle where, you know, you can hold them to drag them through the airport. That's a lot of trouble. So we use the expression mala sem alça to talk about someone who is trouble or a very inconvenient person, someone who's difficult to deal with. You say that person is mala sem alça. Giro. Giro can is one of those words that you can use for so many things, but it just means nice, cool, lovely, pretty, 